A Karen accuses me of trying to cut in line at the grocery store by faking my disability. When I try to explain myself, things take a violent turn. Here's what happened. First, let me give you a little background about myself. I'm a 19-year-old guy, and I've been living with multiple sclerosis, MS, for a few years now. For those who aren't familiar with the condition, Mississippi is a disease that affects the central nervous system, causing various symptoms like muscle weakness, balance issues, and fatigue. In my case, it's pretty rough some days, making it difficult for me to walk long distances or stand for extended periods. So, now that you know a bit about me, let me tell you about the day I had an encounter with a wild Karen in her natural habitat, the grocery store. It was a Saturday afternoon, and I had to pick up some groceries. I headed to the store with my trusty cane, which I used to help me balance and navigate the aisles. The store was quite busy, but I managed to make my way through the crowded space, collecting the items I needed. As I finished up my shopping, I could feel my legs getting weaker and more fatigued. I knew I needed to check out soon, so I slowly made my way to the front of the store. I spotted an express lane, which was supposed to be for customers with 10 items or fewer, and thought it would save me from having to stand in a long line. As I approached the line, I noticed a woman, the Karen, with a cart overflowing with groceries. She clearly had more than 10 items but seemed to think the rules didn't apply to her. I hesitated for a moment, wondering if I should say something, but my legs were screaming at me to sit down, so I decided to join the line behind her. As soon as I did, she whipped around and gave me the death glare. Excuse me, she said, her voice dripping with condescension. Can't you read? This lane is for people with fewer than 10 items. I was taken aback by her tone but managed to respond calmly. Yes, I know. I have multiple sclerosis, and standing for long periods is difficult for me. I was hoping I could use this lane to check out more quickly. Karen squinted her eyes, clearly skeptical. Well, you don't look disabled, she scoffed. You're just trying to cut the line. Feeling my cheeks heat up with frustration, I tried to keep my cool. I assure you I'm not. I have a cane right here, and I genuinely need to use this lane. She wasn't having any of it. You're just a lazy teenager trying to take advantage of the system. I bet that cane is just a prop. I'm not letting you cut in front of me. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I opened my mouth to respond, but before I could, an older gentleman behind me chimed in. Lady, leave the kid alone. He clearly needs to be in this line. Karen's face turned beet red, but she wasn't ready to back down. This is ridiculous, she yelled. You're all just ganging up on me because I'm a single mother, and you think I don't deserve a break. The cashier, who had been silently observing the exchange, finally stepped in. Ma'am, if you don't have a disability, you need to move to another line. This young man clearly needs to check out quickly due to his condition. Karen huffed and started to push her cart away, but not before turning back to me one last time. You should be ashamed of yourself, pretending to be disabled just to save a few minutes in line. Instead of leaving, though, she changed her mind and turned to the cashier. You know what? No, you can't tell me what to do. I'm not moving. She then grabbed my arm and tried to push me out of the way. Caught off guard, I lost my balance and fell to the floor, my cane slipping out of my hand. The fall wasn't too serious, but I felt a sharp pain in my side. People around us gasped, and the older gentleman who had spoken up earlier rushed to my side to help me up. The cashier immediately called for security. We need assistance at Register 4. A customer has assaulted another customer. Karen, realizing the gravity of her actions, began to panic. He was faking it, she yelled, her voice cracking. I didn't hurt him. Security arrived within moments and confronted Karen. Ma'am, we've received a report of an assault. I need you to come with us. Despite her protests, security escorted Karen out of the store, her cart of groceries left behind. In a desperate attempt to gain sympathy, she pulled out her phone and started recording herself. Look at this! I'm being assaulted by security just because I tried to expose a faker! She screeched, waving her phone around. I'm innocent! This is an outrage! The cashier and the older gentleman helped me to my feet, and I thanked them for their support. Meanwhile, Karen continued her tirade, yelling at everyone within earshot and demanding that someone come to her defense. But nobody was buying her act. The security officers remained calm and professional, undeterred by her outbursts, and simply continued to escort her out of the store. The store manager came over, apologizing profusely for the incident, and insisting on covering the cost of my groceries as a gesture of goodwill. I'm just so glad I didn't get injured. As for Karen, I wish she had a more severe punishment. I believe she was just kicked out of the store. Oh my gosh, guys, this story is wild. Can you believe the audacity of this Karen? First, she tries to bend the rules with her overflowing cart in the express lane, and then she has the nerve to accuse OP of faking his disability. I mean, hello, the cane should have been a dead giveaway that he needed that lane. But nope, this Karen just had to make a scene. And the fact that she tried to turn it around and play the victim, saying she was being ganged up on because she's a single mom? Girl, please, the cherry on top of this crazy Karen cake has to be when she actually grabbed OP and caused him to fall. That's just beyond messed up. Thank goodness for the helpful cashier and the kind older gentleman who stood up for OP. 
And can we talk about how the store manager covered the cost of his groceries? That's some top-notch customer service right there. But seriously, what do you guys think about this whole situation? Let me know in the comments below. A Karen called my airline demanding compensation for a delayed flight, despite me explaining that the reason for the delay was because the pilot had a heart attack mid-flight and died. She insisted that she was inconvenienced and deserved compensation. Here's what happened when I lost my patience with her. I work for one of the largest airlines in the world. I'm a reservations agent, and my department handles reservations for our frequent flyers members who have status. This event occurred about five years ago. One evening, I received a call from a passenger demanding compensation because the flight arrived later than scheduled. The cause of a delay like this is what determines if compensation is offered, what form of compensation will be issued in, and how much. While searching through the reservation to determine the answers of these questions, I discovered that the reason the flight was delayed is because the captain pilot of the flight, male, early 40s, had a heart attack mid-flight and died. This pilot had a wife, and I believe three children waiting for him at home, so it was so heartbreaking that he died so young, even more so because he had kids that he would never get to see grow up. Because of the tragedy, the flight was diverted to another city to allow officials to remove his body from the plane. So this passenger, called demanding compensation for the inconvenience of his flight, finally, making it to his destination, late. He kept yelling that he had been late to or completely missed his business meeting. Even after I explained the reason for the delay, he still felt he should get some kind of refund or voucher solely because of the inconvenience. He was saying that we could have just continued to his destination and then take the pilot's body off the plane. He continued to say a lot of ignorant and cold-hearted things, always insisting that we inconvenienced him and he is entitled to compensation. I eventually lost my patience with this jackass and told him, Sir, I'm sorry that you were inconvenienced, but this man was barely 40 years old with a wife and children. They feel having to unexpectedly plan and pay for his memorial service to be quite inconvenient as well. But they understand that this was something completely outside of our control. There was nothing we could have done to prevent this. He continued to try to argue and wanted to speak to corporate. They were going to give him a refund or a voucher. He also threatened that he would post on social media about the horrible customer service and the flight delay. I basically told him good luck with that and ended the call. Someone dies and you're inconvenienced. Get your head out of your ass. Op. Then added an edit. My post may make it appear that the pilot died instantly from the heart attack. He did not. The pilot began suffering from a heart attack mid-flight. Whether he had stopped breathing on the plane, I do not know. But the attack occurred in mid-flight. The flight was diverted because there was a medical emergency and measures needed to be taken to try to keep this hard-working early 40s, father of three alive if at all possible. The end result was that the pilot died due to a heart attack he suffered mid-flight. I'm sure that for all those of you who commented that no one cares when someone else dies, I'm am pretty sure that if you were having a heart attack or stroke in public, you would want and expect measures to be taken to potentially save your life. Though, your callousness makes me question whether any aid would be deserved. For those who said that I was too close to the gentleman to think clearly, we had actually never met. We were based in different cities, and pilots and reservation agents rarely interact. These are procedures if someone has a heart attack, stroke, seizure on board a flight, even if they are currently presenting without a pulse. The flight is required to divert as soon as they are safely able in order to render aid and see if the person, crew, or passenger can be resuscitated or otherwise saved. Expecting compensation from an airline after having to divert due to a medical emergency, which this was, is like expecting to be compensated when paramedics working on car crash victims cause a traffic jam making you late to work. Oh my gosh, OP, I can't even believe the level of entitlement in this story. I mean seriously, this Karen had the nerve to demand compensation because the flight was delayed due to the tragic death of the pilot? Are you kidding me? I can't get over how heartless someone must be to put their own inconvenience over the loss of a life. And the fact that the pilot was only in his 40s and had a family waiting for him at home, it's absolutely heartbreaking. And then, this dude actually suggests that they should have just continued the flight with the pilot's body still on board. Like, who even thinks like that? It's insane. So guys, what do you think about this whole debacle? A Karen causes chaos in a local fish store, demanding attention for her son's birthday and yelling at employees. Little did she know, her terror of snakes and a nearby koi pond would lead to her downfall. Here's what happened. So I woke up Saturday morning in a really good mood. The sun was shining, my dog was cuddling me, and I had a date planned with an awesome woman I'd been flirting with for a couple months. As 2021 has already proven though, good things were not meant to be. After getting ready and waiting for our meetup time, I headed out to find that I'd been stood up. 
It sucks, but in hindsight, I probably should have expected it for reasons I won't get into here, but are valid, and while I'm still annoyed I didn't at least get a cancellation text, I don't hold any ill will, and we're still on friendly terms. The day was slightly saved, however, by a friend who knows that I've always loved the ocean and have always wanted a marine saltwater aquarium. They sent me a link to a good deal on a used tank big enough for some smaller ocean fish, $100 for a 75-gallon tank which is an absolute steal, so I was extremely excited. I needed to patch a leak or two along a corner, but after doing so and testing it, I was confident it was functional again, and headed to the fish store to start getting things needed to set up my tank. Now, for those that don't know, it takes quite a while and a lot of time and work to get a saltwater tank ready before you can even think about putting fish in there, to include treating the water to remove chemicals, then treating to remove chemicals that removing chemicals produces, getting the right pH balance, the precise salt content, precise enough that it's measured to the thousandths of a decimal, and finally adding live sand and rocks, meaning they have bacteria living in or on them that will help the nitrogen cycle of the tank and other things I'm not smart enough to fully understand. Oh, and a heater, so it stays the right temperature. Now I tell you all of this not to bore you with details or because I think internet strangers are interested in my dating life, or, more honestly, lack thereof, but so you can understand the mindset I had going into the store. I was annoyed, a bit angry because at the time I only knew I'd been stood up and didn't know the reason, and more than a little overwhelmed at the task I had set out to do. In short, while I'm generally an easygoing guy who tries to let things slide, this particular Saturday I wasn't really in the mood to be ducked with, as the kids say, or at least I think they do. Okay, anyway, lengthy backstory I'm sure I'll get plenty of complaints about out of the way. On to the story you came here for. I arrived at the local fish store and before asking for help decided to browse a bit. Important to note, this fish store also happens to have reptiles for sale as well, and a side shop of exotic pets like lemurs, parrots, and other smaller creatures that are not for sale but people can pay to feed, take pictures with, etc. It's also a family-owned shop and is known for having really nice and super helpful employees, but that's just a bonus detail. Anyway, while looking around a few kids were asking their mom what kind of fish some were, who I didn't know, so I volunteered the information to them. This led to an older gentleman asking me for some help with some fish, but after learning I didn't work there, he went about his way, no big deal. Then the chime of someone entering the store sounded, followed by the pitter-patter of little feet moving way too fast to be around so much glass, and the sigh of an exasperated woman can be heard, you know that sound that makes the Karen alarms go off in your head? Or the ones that make decently behaved kids think, wow, maybe I pushed mom too far this time. Yeah, that one. I hear an employee asking the kid not to run, but lose interest and go back to browsing. Also important to the story, and another reason the kid shouldn't be running, you know those big koi ponds in the ground some places have? They have one here, with a small wooden bridge going over it separating the shop from the fish storage. I finally get around to asking for some help and advice on the best way to plan my tank setup, as I have to do it little by little because bad financial decisions, such as prioritizing the need to eat and have health care over having a savings account, means that I will have to do the setup piece by piece. I'm fine with this. Nothing worth having comes easy, or so they say. But I'm worried that this might mean I have to change some things about how I approach the tank build. While speaking with him, I do notice the mother I spoke to earlier with the nice kids, point in our direction to the Karen of today's subject. She walks up to us as the employee is explaining how to use a hydrometer, the device that measures the salinity of water, or I think more accurately, the gravity of the water, whatever that means, and says, my kid wants to see your reptiles. He's back there waiting, but I won't get anywhere near those things. No excuse me, no apology for interrupting. Hell, she didn't even wait for a reply. She just spoke over the employee and turned to walk towards the fish tanks holding the bigger fish. At this, the employee gives me a look of shared annoyance, shrugs, and continues explaining to me. I guess the Karen made a round because she eventually came back and saw we hadn't moved and looked pretty mad and looked right at me. Excuse me. Yes, she did actually say it this time. I believe I told you my son needs help. You can finish talking to your friend after you've done your job. At this, the employee starts with, ma'am, but trails off as my, I guess I needed to relieve some tension and replied, lady, I don't work here and you'd probably get more help if you tried showing some decency to people. Admittedly, even as I said it, I knew I was only going to make things worse. And for what it's worth, a small part of me did feel bad for poking a bear I knew would be other people's problem. But it just slipped through my filter and I wasn't going to back down now. Predictably, this set her off. She started going on about how it was her kid's birthday was today, and since this damn hoax is still going on, yet she was wearing a mask so I'm not sure what she really believes, she couldn't take him to a proper zoo like he wanted so they 
had to settle for this shit show. It's a fairly small store, so the owner-manager showed up around this time, cutting her off and asking her to calm down, explaining that I don't work there, and somehow wrangling her over to the counter where she could pay for her son to feed slash hold some of the animals. Surprisingly, instead of doubling down, she actually seemed to believe the owner when he said I didn't work there, not that I got an apology or anything. After this, I thanked the employee and let him head to the back to hide from this psycho, and I turned my attention to the reptile room to check out the lizards and turtles. Unrelated, but I absolutely absolutely love turtles and tortoises. Unbeknownst to myself, the employee, or apparently even the Karen, there was already an employee helping her kid who I guess learned it was his birthday. He had some balloon they give to kids saying happy birthday with the store logo, and was letting him hold some of the animals before his mother paid, or thinking she had already paid or something. I guess it's not important. What is important, however, is a noise slowly rising in volume coming from the store section. A noise that sounds suspiciously like a Karen berating an employee, or in this case, owner, undeservedly. I look to the employee helping the kid to give her a warning look and see that she has handed this kid a snake to hold. Good size, too. Nothing huge, maybe four-ish feet long, look to be about the same size as the kid. Sorry, I'm not knowledgeable on snakes enough to know what kind it was. The kid sees me looking at the employee and I guess thinks I was looking at him holding the snake and brings it up so I can see it better. The kid says, isn't it cool? I love snakes. So I say, yeah, do you have any? Now readers, I feel at this point it's important for me to say that I was genuinely just trying to be nice to the kid and had no malicious intent at all, truly. It was his next sentence that sparked my plan. No, my mom won't let me have any. I think she's scared of them. Okay, now I know that I was wrong for what I said next, and I'm probably even as asshole for getting his hopes up. But it please remember that in the background of all of this is his mother yelling about not paying so much money and how they should be paying her kid for feeding the animals since he's doing their job. I just, I couldn't help it. If you ever read this, kid, I'm sorry for getting your hopes up and for possibly getting you in trouble. Well, it's your birthday, isn't it? Happy birthday. You should go show that snake to your mom and ask her for one for today. I bet she'd let you have one if it's for your birthday. Really? That's a great idea. Yeah, run and let her hold it. Yep, I hear it now. I'm definitely an a-hole. Sorry again, kid. Anyway, the kid takes off with the employee yelling after him that he can't take the snake out of the room and trying to chase him. But I signal for her to stop and tell her to let it slide this once. And I know I said it with a pretty mischievous smile. So maybe she thought it'd be funny too. Or maybe she heard what was going on in the other room. I don't know. But she stopped and watched with me and, oh, was it glorious? The kid runs full tilt towards his mom, snake outstretched to her, yelling, Mom, look, over and over. Her yelling at the owner didn't even seem to phase the kid. She looks over mid-rant and sees her kid running at her with this huge snake and loses. Her. Shit. Her yelling turns into a scream of terror and she turns the other way to run away from her kid and his newfound scaly friend. But remember that koi pond I mentioned earlier? Remember how it has the bridge going over it to cross into the fish room? Yeah, she missed the bridge. Splash! She goes face first into the pond, purse and phone and all. Fish immediately scattering everywhere in fear, but some coming back to investigate the splashing water just as fast as they'd ran. It was amazing. She was thrashing around trying to grab a handhold. I think the pond was only like four feet deep or something. She probably could have just stood up, screaming the entire time because she was now surrounded by harmless, curious koi, which seemed to be a completely new hell for her. Anyway, after getting out and yelling at her kid to put the snake down, and yelling at the owner about suing them for all they're worth, and just yelling in general, a very wet Karen and her kid left the store, and it was a little bit quieter, but not much. We were all almost crying from laughter. Not much happened after that, though after learning it was my plan, I did get two pounds of live rocks for free, which were approximately $11 so I was happy, and went home to start working on setting up my tank. Now I know I was an asshole to use her kid against her like that, and I do feel bad for the kid, but honestly, I'd probably do the same thing again given the chance. I visited the store on Tuesday again, and they said they hadn't heard anything from Karen, so they're probably in the clear. Not that I think she'd have any grounds to sue on? I don't know, I'm definitely not a lawyer. Wow, this story is absolutely insane. I cannot believe the audacity of this monster, causing chaos in a fish store, demanding attention for her son's birthday, and yelling at employees. But the icing on the cake is when she falls into the koi pond while running away from her son and his new pet snake. It's like something out of a comedy movie. I can't even imagine the embarrassment she must have felt. But honestly, it's what she deserved for being so rude and entitled. The poor kid probably got in trouble with his mom after that, but I hope he had a good birthday nonetheless.